talk about it. I mean, I had a lot of shame, especially when I became pregnant. Well, with both my, with my second pregnancy and my pregnancy with my fourth pregnancy, there was like this thing that I wanted more, you know, growing up, all I wanted was to be a mother. I didn't want to have a career. I didn't want, I just wanted to be a mom. And so when I became pregnant with the twins, it was like, okay, I went through IVF, like I'm part of the, you know, the community. But then when I became pregnant naturally, I was like, well, did, was I ever infertile? Like there was such a mind, like really yeah. messed with my mind. And I can't, and I can't tell people, is this going to cause pain for another human being, like another woman that struggled, like my celebration and then when I became pregnant with Tallulah and already had a very established business at the time, working with the fertility community, I, I didn't tell them till I think it was 28 weeks. But what I didn't take into consideration was how many women it was actually going to inspire because inspire. I was 41 years old. Exactly. But it was like, but because, and I've done so much work around this now, but it was that I, I felt like women were going to, I didn't want to cause pain in another. Like I didn't want to like upset anyone. And I felt like there, there are, which I no longer choose to participate in, but there are a lot of unspoken rules in this space about mm -hmm. we don't celebrate pregnancy. Yeah. Like pregnancy is a, you know, trigger warning if it's a pregnancy. Yeah. And in my practice, I've always said, we celebrate pregnancy in another, because if you can celebrate what happens for another, you're yeah. creating the space for that to happen for you. And exactly. so I've never aligned with that, but there has been these things we're going, I don't want like, so in the rebirth of my business now, I'm not participating in that. Like I'm going to exactly. celebrate pregnancy. I will see pregnancy possibility in you just as I will her. But this idea that we, we can't talk about the thing that everyone's trying to do. This <laughs> is why it's such a, you know, mind fuck when yeah. you get pregnant is because you've been, you've been just, there's been resistance against it. And with this said, I want to also say the reason why that happens is again, because the deep and loving desire that you, that you have to have a child. So when you see pregnancy in, an, in a family member, a pregnancy announcement, it's not that you're not happy for the other person. It's just that you're sad for yourself because you, you because you have not yet received that. And one of the tools that I always share is like, when someone gives a pregnancy announcement and you feel triggered, like allow yourself to feel all the feels, right? Feel the jealousy, feel, don't deny it. Don't try to push it away. Don't make it bad, but then bring your focus and attention back to the moment when you're pregnant, mm -hmm. connecting and with the essence and energy and the vision of you becoming pregnant. So you can, so you can be in that energy and in that space rather than get it going too far down the rabbit hole and how much suffering is going to come to you now because someone else in your life is pregnant. And yes, it may be difficult. And it, I watched every single person around me become pregnant. I oh, left girl. my corporate yeah. job. <laughs> and I think there were seven pregnancy announcements within the three months after I left. I was like, was I keeping everyone from becoming pregnant? Like, right. You know? And yeah. so just knowing that, allowing yourself the space to feel those feelings. None of them are bad or wrong, but then just coming back to the vision that you have for your family and leaving yourself open still to the possibility just because someone else is pregnant doesn't mean that it's not a possibility for you. And the more open and the more we can celebrate pregnancy in another, the more I think we leave ourselves open for pregnancy to happen in ourselves. And I'm not saying that that has to be perfect or it's a, you know, rule in the sand, but yeah, no, I agree. And I, yeah. I went on the same journey as you, but I want to say like, we all live in several realities, right? And definitely two, like you live in a reality right now that you're not pregnant, right? You can't change yeah. like You're not pregnant right now, but you can also live in the reality of when you get pregnant. Yeah. And once again, going back to like ways that we block our community from the innate wisdom is that we once again put up lack we put up we almost highlight the uh, fear the lack the insecurities the hurt around other people's success where once again if you take that energy 
right? Obviously honor your, honor where you are. Yes. Again, get real, real. How long are you staying there? A week, two weeks, three weeks, well, four and weeks. Who are you this goes back to who are you surrounding yourself with? Are you in a community? Like I started seeing a lot of community or where they're just sitting around Yes. like complaining and building the energy yes. of the suffering. And mm -hmm. yes, on the fertility journey, it feels like a lot of suffering, like, and it's reoccurring grief month after month, right? Yeah. The loss of the dream, the loss of the hope month after month. But what are the tools you're using to, yeah. like you just said, not stay there yeah. for too long, but there is a, there is a I think we're seeing more women come to the side of wanting to see it as like knowing that it's really hard, but wanting to be in a different energy and in a different yeah. possibility and a different way of being. But there is this other network or group, I don't even want to call it group, segment something where it's a lot about um uh, of, about we don't celebrate pregnancy, a lot about meeting people, uh kind of like deep down, like where it's just building well, it's the easy. grief. It's easy yeah. to stay there. Yeah. Right. Like that's an easier emotion to sit in because you don't have to take responsibility. And because for most of us, we've actually sat in that emotion for a really long time in other areas of our life. And that has actually contributed to the fertility issues. So that's a safe space. And the women who are getting pregnant naturally IVF whichever way and aren't moving forward in their consciousness they are once again building up this huge block and and it's hard to see through that unless you've broken through yourself and you break through and go like when I was designing my course I didn't have one picture of a pregnancy like person, right? Nothing. Mm. I was like, no, I got to protect them. And I was still in yes. this like lack phase. Yes. And then I don't know what switched for me, but I was like, this is fucking stupid. Like you, like we want to be seeing where we want to go. We got to be being that person. So bring in as many images. And obviously it's like, it's like that path, right? You'll get there if you continuously move a step forward. You're not going to all of a sudden be able to, you know, do miraculous things. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of issues in our community. And unfortunately, they even in all their best intention, and I know they come from a really good place and I know they feel the heartache, but the scientific fact because this is all scientifically proven now is that they're literally making people's journeys longer, harder, more expensive because they're putting up those energetic blocks and they're staying in lack and they're staying in that mindset of um, 